Hello everyone, my name is Unshu An and welcome to today's episode of Real Talk. Okay, sound rolling, camera rolling, and action! Alright, today's episode is live action and we have with us Juti, Gladys, Timothy, and Kid. Hello everybody! Hey Shuan! Hello! <laughs> so what would be a word that you would use to describe your film? So yeah. personal is the word. Uh, this story is something that me and my director experience, uh, mm. and we observe in our surroundings. Mm, simple. I think I would choose simple. Simple. I think also it's very easy to digest. Huh? I feel like because I feel like the ideas that you put forward in your film, which is a bit like, uh, would you say S and M? Fetish. Fetish. I think it's closer to fetishes. Yeah. Fetish. Okay. Yeah. It's actually something that a lot of people don't understand. Like they don't understand the concept of people having fetishes and acting on them in in yeah. everyday life, and you make it look so normal. Why it felt normal was because it was based off truth. I honestly didn't think too much into it. I I really just woke up one day and then I was like, okay. Uh, and then I really had this idea in my head, and then I just really just wrote wrote the script one. And too much. It was really very uh, instinct. I would say when when it came to writing and making the film. Maybe that's why I feel simple to you. Yeah. So it's actually written based off uh, a real person. So it's based off the story of Heidi, who was a breast cancer survivor turned volunteer. I think the right word would be honest, mm. because um, we took the team and I, the team and I took um, this social realist approach. So we didn't want to glorify or sensationalize things that really do happen. So. Um, we try to be quite um, dedicated to like um, portraying things as they are. Who has questions for somebody else? Go! So how was it like producing and acting in your own film? Yes. It's quite tough, I think. Like it's quite <laughs> almost like funny sometimes. Cause, Cause like, um, you know as an actor, you are quite isolated in your own well, in that sense, like you can just be in a corner on set and then just, you know, listen to what the director says and that's it. But because I'm also the producer, so I remember there was one time I was supposed to do like a very emotional and like a pensive uh, mood, you know, and I'm supposed to do a very long take. So I would do this thing, I walk to the room, do this, and then I would sit on a bit and then like almost want to cry, never cry, you know, that kind of thing. And then I sat there and in between takes, my PA came to me and he was like, Hey Zuchi, we buying dinner, you want prawn noodle or not? And then the thing is, because I mentioned that the prawn noodle downstairs is actually very nice, then after that he was like, <laughs> then I was like, I, like, I literally turned to him and like, can, can, prawn noodle, can. Then he's like, so you want dry? You want chili? You want soup? Or you want, then I was like, dry, don't want chili. Then my soup is okay, okay. And then he's like, okay, so uh, uh, so I go and buy it, yeah. Then I'm like, <laughs> like at that moment, I was like, oh, like, can you not? Can you see that I'm trying to emote and I'm so unprofessional, I'm really trying my best. That is tough. It's tough to be in that emotional space, though, and like to stay in it and to uh, yeah. and to like snap out of it and like. <laughs> try to think rationally like okay I want prawn noodle without chilli because later chilli start my teeth or what you know <laughs> <laughs> alright kid do you have a question for Gladys um, I was just wondering because in your film there were a lot of shots of bubbles so I'm wondering if that is part of the script and as the writer what that means to you and, or was it um, like an accident on set or like something decided on set so the bubbles were scripted, they were all written in a script and um, they were actually really hard to film because you can't control where a bubble flies. It represents different things to different characters. So for the main character, um, for the character of Yun Yin, who had just, um, who's going through breast cancer, um, to her, she kind of sees herself like a bubble. Um, that like her life is like a bubble, like it's just floating around. She has no control over over it, just like how we as a crew has no control over it. Um, mm. And that it, it's it's short lived and it can disappear at any moment. So she kind of sees it in a very kind of pessimistic way. Um, but to me, 
I think bubbles are really beautiful. It is very beautiful. The the way it reflects. Yeah. Uh, the way it reflects the ephemeral quality that it has. Yeah. Yeah, it's quite captivating yeah. to watch actually. What would be a word that you use to describe yourself in a work situation? Actually, I feel like our collaborators who are mostly our friends, they will be happier if we had like we push ourselves out as as the creator of the work. Like if you are always thinking about whether they're happy, whether they are like okay or not, you know, like you all come and help me, I know I'm fine, you know. Then Like, like I just feel like they will be happier if we had push ourselves, and that the the end product is actually you know the best that we can do as a team. Okay, your what would be your word to describe you at work? One leg kicking. <laughs> <laughs> like, I just I feel like for indie like short film, especially for producers, right? You really do a lot of things. Like we really did everything ourselves. I I did my own makeup. I did my own wardrobe. All the clothes are like my own or like my friends. You know, I have to find a nurse outfit for the extras and stuff. And yeah, it's just one leg kicking. Ah, uh. what would you say is your favorite scene in the film? I'd say it's actually a particular shot, Pink Sky, and I like it because it was actually very hard to film. So first of all, we wanted um, to shoot a real pink sky. So every day, like liter- literally every day, um, at evening time, I'll be looking out the window, looking for pink skies. But we never had a pink sky until the last day of shoot, the very last day oh, of man. shoot, the very last shot before we wrapped, we got the pink sky. And so I remember we were all like rushing before sundown because we were elsewhere shooting. We all like took care of. Ever like drive or hopped on whatever vehicle we could find, went to the location, set up the camera, and wow, there was just there was just like there was just a pink sky there. My favorite scene would be the 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 scene where she's showering. Yeah. Ah. Okay. Where the camera pans down, and that, that's my comedy. Yeah. Uh. Like you know, uh, it, the whole scene was not scripted at all. It was written in a whole different way. A lot of the dialogue I changed on the day, so the actors were a bit like, ah. And then also why it's one of my favorite scenes was because it's such a simple scene. It's just the camera panning down, and then but it revealed so much about. Uh, uh, it gave like it revealed. It, it, I feel like it was like a, a shot where it was more of a. Uh, it was planned to the that, that way. Uh, where I was like, oh, why am I seeing like oh? It makes you wonder like, uh, why is there scars on her? And then when the end comes in, when just the, the when the knife comes in, and then you go like, oh my god, like so ah uh, so like, I feel like like it's a little bit like an Easter egg kind of thing that I like to do in my films where I like kind of like give you guys a little bit like okay uh, I'll show you like uh, something and then like oh then after I'll not talk about it. If I hadn't read the synopsis, I would not have known what was happening. And even though I had read the synopsis, it kind of did take me a while to be like, okay, where is this going? I think it has to be the scene where um. The kid helps the mom with the tying of the rubber band oh. because um, leading up to production, all our project advisors advised us against that scene because one, um, they didn't want to trauma, they didn't want us to traumatize the child actor. Right. So prior to production, I had to speak to the mom and explain to her like, okay, this is the scene, this is what he's gonna do, that sort of thing, so that he understands that this is just like you know, acting. As a team, we were very glad that it worked out because a lot of our project advisors, the people we consulted with, they all warned us against that scene. But yeah. we felt that it needed that scene. Yeah. It really hit, man. Like, and she was like, get me my medicine. And then yeah. he comes and then he starts like, Doing the whole um, ritual, so to speak. All right, we've come to the end of the episode. Thank you so much for sharing what you did. I feel like I've learned a lot listening to you talk, and now I want to wish you all the best, all the best, all the best at the awards, guys. <laughs> Thank, <laughs> Thank you so you. much. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Thank